A blessed good morning to all. We welcome you once more to our virtual worship service. As we join in spirit today, the Bible says in Psalm 33 and verse 1, Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Let's lift our voices and our hearts to the Lord this morning with our first song, Welcome Holy Spirit.
Amen. Our reading today comes from the book of Luke chapter 9 verses 21 to 27. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone, and he said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Amen. God had blessings to the reading of his words this morning. Just before the message for today, we have our last song, Holy and Anointed. Good morning, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. 
I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a good thing that we can come together to praise his wonderful name. Bow your heads with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, with heart filled with gratitude for the privilege of being able to gather in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and the opportunity to hear your word. As we prepare to receive your message, we ask for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and our mind, Lord, that we may be receptive to your truth. May your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, guiding us closer to you. Remove all distraction, Lord, and let your presence dwell among us. Speak through me, Lord, so that everything said and done may glorify your name and edify your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. This morning as we look in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 21 to 27, I want us to look at the two sides of the cross. The two sides of the cross. There is a story of a little boy whose sister needed a blood transfusion. The doctor explained that she had the same disease that the boy had recovered from two years earlier. Her only chance for recovery was a transfusion from someone who had previously conquered the disease. Since the two children had the same rare blood type, the boy was the ideal donor. Would you give your blood to Mary? The doctor asked Johnny. And Johnny hesitated. His lower lip started to tremble. And then he smiled and he said, sure, for my sister, sure. Soon the two children were wheeled into the hospital room. Mary, pale and thin. Johnny, robust and healthy. But neither spoke. But when their eyes met, Johnny smiled. As the nurse inserted the needle into his arm, Johnny smile fades. He watched the blood flow through the tube. And with the ordeal almost over, his voice slightly shake, shaky, broke the silence. Doctor, he said, when do I die? Only then did the doctor realize why Johnny had hesitated when he asked. The doctor realized why his lip had trembled when he agreed to donate his blood. He had thought giving his blood to his sister meant giving up his life. And in that brief moment, he had made his great decision. Johnny fortunately didn't have to die to save his sister. Each of us, however, has a condition more serious than this little girl, Mary. And it required Jesus to give not just his blood, but his life. Amen? Our only hope, church, is a spiritual blood transfusion from God. You see, Jesus conquered this terrible disease of sin on the cross. 
And as we look to our script this morning, I want us to look at Luke 9, 23 through 25 once more. He says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? First, I want us to notice the two sides of the cross. One side being salvation, the other sin, if I can put it that way. One side is we can embrace the cross and the power of salvation that comes with it. We can live a victorious life through Jesus Christ because of the price he paid on the cross. See, the old law required sacrifice. But this law was not sufficient. Hmm? A supreme sacrifice was needed to cleanse us of our sins. Jesus willingly became that sacrifice on a cross at Calvary. We can accept salvation through the price paid on the cross. And daily carry our cross. We can deny ourselves and take up our cross daily. But still there is a second. And eternally fatal side. Which is to deny the cross. There is an array of reason one might do this. But in the end... Any denial is acceptance of eternal doom. And we must be aware of this. The great example of the two sides can be seen in the story of the two thieves at Calvary. Let's read Luke 23, 39 through 43. It says, one of the criminals who hung there hurdled insult at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Surely I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. On one side of Jesus was doubt and unbelief. On the other side was faith. On one side was arrogance. On the other side was humility. Profanity speak out on one side. But reverence spoke out on the other. On one side the voice of the kingdom of this world spoke out. On the other side, the voice of the kingdom of God spoke. One side remained lost, while the other side was found. One side, eternal damnation was met. But on the other side, an eternal savior was met. Hallelujah. But let's look a little closer. At the words and how they reflect the hearts of these men. You see, one of the thieves 
as the Bible refers to them. Choose to deny Christ as so many were doing that day and continue to do even today. In fact, he blasphemed the Lord saying, if you are the Christ, like we have read, if you are the Christ, if, first the choice of word, if, This choice of words clearly show his denial of Christ. He was asking for yet another sign that Jesus was the Savior. This thief was looking to be saved physically, not spiritually. Hmm? It was not a matter of Jesus being able to save himself or both thieves, he was willingly lying down his life that day to save all who would accept him. It was a matter of the thief making a spiritual decision to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now this would where if would come in, if his heart had been right. Hmm? If his heart had been right, he would have been saved spiritually for eternity. Hmm? But instead, his eternity was one of doom. But let's look at the second man, the second thief. He rebuked the other thief. Look at verse 40 again. But the other criminal rebuked him. Hmm? Saying, don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence. Look at verse 41. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. This thief recognized Jesus as his savior. And how I know that? Because he said, Jesus, Lord. What does it mean to call one Lord? Well, it means a, a relationship exists. Hmm? Something has been seen in that person that you can believe in. You are willing to serve that person. Then he returned to Jesus and he asked him, uh, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This thief exercised faith that day. He exercised faith and he received salvation not because of something he did, hmm? but because of in whom he believed. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Isn't that fake? And Jesus said to him, Surely, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. What an assurance. Hmm? What an assurance that he exercised faith. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And because of faith, he received salvation. You see, the horizontal piece of the cross. I want to make reference to that. I want us to take a look at the horizontal portion of the cross and, and the vertical as well. And, and if I can say or go as far as saying that the horizontal piece of the cross, can we look at it in representing the distance God will remove our sins from us? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at Psalm 103.12. 
The Bible say, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The distance from the east to the west is an immeasurable distance. It's a continuous, never-ending circle. The two will never meet. Our sins and God's remembrance of them will never meet. Our sins are never to, re to be remembered. The distance from east to west is a natural phenomenon that man cannot explain. Hmm? Instead, we just accept it. And God's plan of salvation is hard, if not impossible to understand. I mean, why would God give his son for us? Why, why would Jesus say to that man, today you will be with me in paradise? He knew that many would reject him as savior. Even those that accept Jesus as their savior are flawed. We cannot understand the, the commitment, the love, church, that God has for us, for each of us. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. You nor I will never ever deserve it. We just have to accept it and give him thanks and praise for salvation. Amen? But God loves us. He loves us. He sees potential in us. A mistake so many of us make is stopping or going back to our past sin. And if you agree that the distance from the east to the west with the word of God that it's never ending circle then how would our sin that god has placed this distance from us ever catch up with us hmm? they cannot if we are going forward our sin would never catch us and we would never catch our past if we go forward are you with me However, so many of us are guilty of going back to our past. We are guilty at times of returning to our sinful nature. I want to encourage you today to go forward. Press toward that high calling. Amen? That we may remain in the obedience of our father i mean paul himself said it, it it's a struggle look at look, romans 7 14 to 20. he says we know that the law is spiritual but i am unspiritual sold as a slave to sin i do not understand what i do for what i want to do i do not do but what i hate I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it. But it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature for I have the desire to do what is good but I cannot carry it out for I do not do the good I want to do but the evil I do not want to do this I keep doing now if I do what I do not want to do it is no longer I who do it, 
but it is the sin living in me that does it. So, what does the vertical piece represent? We had looked at the horizontal. Let's look at the vertical. It represents our life, church. Because of the cross, we can rise. Rise above our carnal nature. Rise above the sin that once bound us. Our walk with the Lord should represent a climb. Hmm? We do not have to stay down in the merry clay. No. Christ has won the victory so he will take us out. We should not stay down. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Let me use an illustration. If you use the mathematical term of a slope for the two pieces of the cross, the horizontal and the vertical, then even more meaning of the cross can be seen. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See, the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Hmm? The slope of a horizontal line is zero. The horizontal line would represent all of mankind. We in and of ourselves bring nothing to Christ. We have zero power then over sin. If any of us die on a cross, nothing would be brought or offered to all mankind. I don't mean to belittle no one, but we are not as significant as we often like to think. Hmm? I want you to understand what we bring to the table when we come to the Lord is zero. However, the slope of the vertical line is undefined. Vertical lines have no slope. We can't divide by zero, which is, of course, why this slope value is undefined. This relationship is always true. A vertical line will have no slope. And the slope is undefined. Or the line has no slope, meaning that the line is vertical. This represents what Jesus brought to the cross. Hmm? Undefined love, church. Undefined mercy. Undefined grace. Undefined power over death, hell, and the grave. You see, to the Romans and to the people of the New Testament era, it was a symbol of shame talking about the cross. It was once the Jews' stumbling block. It was once the Gentiles' foolishness. But however, to those who are called, both Jews and Greek, we receive Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God through the cross. For many, the cross is a symbol of our faith. Hmm? It is a symbol of remembrance in many churches. It has even become a part of our clothing. A sign, a tag. And sometimes as a jewelry. But Calvary Cross. Hmm? Calvary Cross. Is valuable. It is the foundation of salvation. Christ paid the price on timely sacrifice on that cross. Satan has tried to underestimate its power, but is unsuccessful. And so we see and can experience, church, its power 
that it is eternal. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me close with a story. A farmer once drove with two high-spirited hearts into town. Stopping in front of one of the stores, he was about to enter when the horse took fright. And he sprang in front of them and seized the rein. Startled by, 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 by strange noise, the, the horses dashed down the street. And the man still was clinging to the bridles. And on they rushed until the horse, wild with frenzy, rose on their hind legs and, and leaping upon the man. All came with a crash to the earth. And when the people came and rescued the bleeding body of the man and found him in death, last agony, Bystander bend over and tenderly ask, Why did you sacrifice your life for horses and wagon? And he gasped with his breath as his spirit departed. Go and look in the wagon. They turned and there was asleep on the straw. His little boy, his son. And as they laid the mangled form of the hero in his grave, no one said, this sacrifice was too great. He died for you, church. He died for me. Jesus died for you. He died for me. His blood bath atoned for our race, for our sins. Oh, wonderful love. He came from above to suffer and die in our place. Today you have two choices. Accept or deny the cross. You can deny Christ as one of the thieves did or accept him as Lord. You can allow your sin to be cast as far as the east is from the west and raised to your potential that God has planned for you. Remember, we bring zero to the table, but Christ, love, is the vertical piece of the cross. His love is undefined. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Father, we thank you for the message we have heard today, remembering, reminding us of the incredible grace you show to the man on the cross next to you. Just as you extend forgiveness and eternal life to him, we are reminded that your mercy is available to all who call upon you in faith. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ, and for the hope of eternal life with you. As we leave this place, may the truth of your word continue to work in our hearts. Help us to trust in your promise, just as the man did and to share this message of grace with others. Strengthen us to walk in faith, always remembering that it is never too late to turn to you. We are grateful for your ending love, your unending love, and your forgiveness, your mercy, and your grace. Father, blessed be your name, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for joining us this day and I pray that you would look at God's word and meditate on it and allow God's word to saturate your heart as we allow the spirit to be our guide. 
God bless you. God bless your family. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.